Hey folks, BFG Neil here, and today I'm going to be talking about the differences between a full hotspot, a light hotspot, and a DIY hotspot, and what activity each one can participate in. So first up, I want to talk about data-only hotspots. So there are two, two ways to do this. The first one is that you build one, and I've built one here. This is a Raspberry Pi with a hat, and on that hat is a LoRa concentrator. Those are the only parts that you really need. Um, full hotspots obviously have an ECC chip on there to store the key and things. Um, but the second one is, is, this is what I want to show, the Dragino LPS-08. So the LPS-08 is a, is a nice little data-only hotspot that allows you to create coverage without needing to wait for full or light hotspots to you know, be delivered to you. So you would only build them if you want to use the network and not wait around for um, full hotspots or, or light hotspots, but they will never earn POC. So the, prob the difference is, is that you know, Dragino have a model based on this coming, but this model doesn't have an ECC chip and it also hasn't been through the HIP-19 process. So this will never earn from POC. This will only earn from data. So any hotspot that you can buy out there at the moment that hasn't been through the HIP-19 process will only ever function as a data-only hotspot. And the community seems to be a bit um, confused by some of the terms. So this is a data-only hotspot, right? It will never become a light hotspot. So the, di the difference there is that this is missing an ECC chip which stores the swarm key and it also hasn't been through the HIP-19 process. So it will only ever transfer data. And you may be asking yourself, why would I want a data-only hotspot? And the simple answer is, is that you don't want to wait for full or light hotspots and you just want to use a network. You may have a use case where you really need to cover an area with coverage for uh, data transfer. So you can buy these units very cheaply, put them in and transfer data across the network. So up next, I want to talk about full hotspots. Full hotspots are the ones you're probably most used to. What they have is an ECC chip in them, and that chip stores a swarm key. They've been through the HIP-19 process. So for example, I have a few here. This one's a control Eno. You've probably seen it on my channel before. I also have the Curlinx. These are a little lower powered, and a Bobcat. Um, again, this is a lower power Bobcat, so it's sitting on my shelf. And, and the difference is quite vital there for RAM. So these run a much fuller, full fat system um, that includes downloading the blockchain, syncing the blockchain, and following along. Um, so they need more hardware. Um, now that comes with its own problems. So for example, I have a Bobcat with one gig of RAM. Um, the new ones don't, they have two. But my problem is, is this one is not enough RAM to keep up on chain. Um, Curlink have had the same issues. So you'll see here that this Curlink has a little USB stick in the side. Now they use this as uh, swap storage, so it's not the best. Once we get to like gateways, I can take that that trip out and it will be absolutely fine and run at full full whack, full bore. So the main issue with full hotspots is that Sinky the chain uses a lot of memory and a lot of CPU. Um, there's also some problems with how the system works. So when you gossip with peers blocks, new blocks on the chain, you're doing that over the internet connection. Um, between each hotspot, it's called lib peer to peer the system that runs that. Um, and lib peer to peer requires you to have an incoming port. Um, so when you're being dialed, you can be dialed in and, and actually receive commands. Um, and these issues of why light hotspots are coming. Which brings me to the third type of hotspot, light hotspots. Now, I haven't got a light hotspot to show you, but what I can show you is some of the hardware differences between them. Talk about some of the software differences, right? So as you saw earlier, this is a DIY hotspot. Um, it's a Raspberry Pi 4 with two gig of RAM. But what we can do with light hotspots is the requirement for CPU and memory almost goes away. So something like a Raspberry Pi Zero, which is a much smaller, much less power hungry um, system can exist to, to run these hotspots, right? So let's talk a bit about software. So there's two parts to a hotspot at the moment. Um, one is a packet forwarder. This is what tells the LoRa card to send and listen. Uh, the second is the miner and soon to be light hotspot client. Um, and what that does is the miner um, connects to other hotspots, um, gossips, peers. Um, and at the moment, challenge construction is also done from this. So, you know, when it's eligible to send a challenge, it will It'll pick a random one. And across the internet, it will dial it and say, you know, beacon. So full hotspots have two issues at the moment. The first one is keeping up with sync, obviously. So dialing peers and connecting to them and gossiping blocks can be an issue on, on strict firewalls. And it can also just slow down from general internet usage. So that goes away. But the second one is that it has to be able to dial other hotspots to get that information through. So there are two big ones. Um, the problems at the moment is often a challenger will dial a beaconer, but the strict firewall will just not hear it. So you'll send a challenge and it will fail. The second one, is the zero witness problem, right? So they may be able to dial out and say, please transmit a beacon, 
and the beaconer will send that beacon and then the witnesses will go have to respond to the challenger. So they say, okay, I've witnessed the beacon, go to send it back to the challenger and a strict firewall comes into place. So they, they can't hear it. They can't hear that incoming request because of the port um, not being open. Now, the brilliance with light hotspots is that they move challenge construction to validators. So validators need to have the port open. They can't be behind strict firewalls. So if they want to be able to heartbeat check in, it's called. Um, they need to have those ports open. So they can't earn from consensus unless those ports are open. So they will be doing challenge construction going on in the, in the future. But the software on the hot, light hotspots changes as well. So at the moment, we have a packet forwarder. And then with light hotspots, there'll be the uh, gateway RS software. So this, this changes it. Um, so rather than um, dialing out to challenge other hotspots, validators will do the challenging. So they will leave a message on the server, say, right, I've selected this, this hotspot to um, beacon. And what happens is using gRPC, the light hotspot client talks to validators and says, have I got any requests? But that is an outbound thing. So they don't need to be able to talk to into to be able to told to do something. They just regularly check in and say, right, is it my, is it my turn to do anything? So the great thing is not only that the hotspots lose sync and they, you know, a hotspot has to be fully synced to be able to send or, or witness a beacon, um, they just need to be turned on um, and then they'll just regularly check in to see if they've got any jobs to do. And when they report witnessing, they're reporting it to validators with ports open. So right now the statistics, something like 40% of the network and POC activity fails. So this will go away. So devices will be much quicker to boot up. You know, you won't be waiting around for days for it to sync. It will be instantly synced. There's no sync involved. So, you know, they're instantly working. But also the, the software that runs this is, is the sync is going away. So the hardware requirement goes down to, you know, hundred, hundreds of megs of um, RAM rather than, you know, needing gigabytes. The same with the SD card storage. Um, you know, you just don't need to store the chain so they could be much, much smaller devices. So it brings the network into a much better plug and play state. So just to confirm to everyone, the four hotspots become light hotspots when the software's ready. Um, they've released some development timelines for this, and I'll leave a link in the description below for you to be able to see this guide. Um, and it, you'll just see that um, activation of light hotspots on mainnet will happen before full hotspots convert to light. And that's it. So there's three types of hotspot, full hotspot, light hotspot, data only hotspot. Full hotspots are going away. They will be converted to light hotspots. Light hotspots lose sync. Um, they also lose challenge construction, which is a very, very tiny percent of earnings, which is only 0.9%. So, you know, for, for the for the benefit that we get of uh, validators doing construction uh, means that POC will fail less. So consistent earnings will return to the network. And it also means you'll spend less time offline. Okay, that's it for the video. Thanks very much for watching. Um, if you like this content, please like and subscribe to see more. Bye for now.